Let's continue hacking some smart contracts. Welcome back to the Ethernaut challenge series. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the telephone challenge, but if you haven't already, then be sure to check out all the other videos in our YouTube playlist. But without further ado, let's start looking at this telephone contract. The telephone contract is a rather short one. We have an owner, in the constructor or owner is going to be set, and then we have just one function the change owner function, which takes in an address and it will set the owner to that address. The goal in this challenge is to become the owner of the contract. And that seems trivial because the change owner function does exactly that. But it does that only when the tx.origin is not equal to the message.sender. So we need to make sure that tx.origin is equal to the message.sender. But what is tx.origin and what is message.sender? For that, let's take a quick look at the Solidity documentation. So here we have the documentation on global variables, which is very useful because if we scroll down, we see here uh, message sender and we see tx.origin. Now message sender will return an address and that is the sender of the message, the current call. Then tx.origin also returns an address, but this is the sender of the transaction, which is the full call chain, the sender of the full call chain. So, okay, what is the difference here? Well, we have a contract that we need to hack. We can call a function on a contract directly from our wallet. In that case, we call that function. So we are the message.sender but we are also the transa transaction.origin since, well, we are the origin of this transaction. We make the transaction. Now, what if we put a malicious contract in between? What if we make a call to a contract that then makes a call to the challenge contract? In that case, the message.sender will be that contract in the middle or that malicious contract making the call because they make the physical call. Whereas the transaction at origin is still us, the wallet making that call to the malicious contract because they are initiating the transaction, they are paying the gas fee, that is the origin of the transaction. So this means that the message.sender is not always the same as the origin of the transaction. And this is a well-known issue in Solidity because if we go into the documentation for uh, the security recommendations or considerations of Solidity, it states to never use tx.origin for authorization. So uh, the documentation says it, um, we have already kind of described in a text scenario so why don't we just try to do that? Why don't we try to write that contract in between that will allow us to be to have a different message.sender than is our, the origin of our transaction? So for that, once again, I'm going to use the Remix Ethereum IDE. And I've already imported the telephone.solidity contract here. And I've made a little stub here for the telephone attack.solidity um, contract, because this is going to be our contract in between, right? So this contract, it's going to import telephone.solidity uh, and it's going to have one property of type telephone. So this is going to be our link to the telephone contract. And in our constructor, then we have one value that we pass to it, which is the address of our telephone contract. And then we can here get the uh, telephone, an object of type telephone out of that, that we can interact with as such. So now all that we have to do is write a new function. So we're gonna write a new function. I'm gonna call it exploit. It's not gonna take any variables and it's going to be public. Okay, so we have our public exploit function. And well, what is this gonna have to do? Well, all this contract has to do is now make a call to the telephone contract. So we'll type telephone contract dot, and then we make a call to the change owner uh, function. That change owner function, it needs to take in an, addre an address to set the owner to. So uh, for this, I'm gonna set the address to message.sender. So what this now will do is, if I call the exploit function on this contract, it is gonna make a call to the change owner function with my uh, address, so the address of my wallet. The telephone contract will then try to change the owner. It's gonna check what the tx.origin is which is, well, my wallet. However, the message.sender is our malicious contract. 
So it's going to set the owner to be that value that we supply it or address and we become the owner of the contract. So let's quickly give that a go. For that, we're first going to here have the telephone.solidity contract and we're going to get it from, uh, well, the instance that Ethernaut has spawned for us. So for that, we're going to inspect elements and in our console, we're going to find that the instance address is this. So I'm going to copy that, paste that in here, and then uh, we can get that contract at that address. And we see here we have the contract. We can check who the owner currently is, which is this 2C, uh, this 2C address. Now, what do I want to do? Well, now I want to deploy our telephone attack contract. So I'm going to save here. We can deploy it. However, we need to specify the address of our telephone contract. So I'm just going to copy that here, paste that in, and deploy this. Now, obviously, when we deploy, we need MetaMask. Uh, we need to accept or confirm that transaction in MetaMask. And I'll be back with you once this transaction has been mined and confirmed. So, okay, our transaction has just been confirmed. So now at our deployed contracts part in Remix here, we see that we have our telephone attack contract as well. Um, and this has our exploit function, which we have to call. So let's call our exploit function. This, once again, we are going to have to confirm this. And I'll be back with you once this transaction is confirmed as well. And after waiting a little bit, we see that that transaction was also confirmed. It has completed successfully. So this should mean that now if we try to query the owner of this telephone contract, that should be us. So let's see if this uh, address here changes. And we see that it changes to uh, OX203. And if I look at my MetaMask here, then we should see that that is our address. And yes, up here we see that our account is OX203. So we are now the owner of this contract and we have solved this challenge. Now, this challenge was a lot of fun. And we learned here that TX.origin should never be used for authorization purposes. So if you ever come across this when auditing a smart contract, then you know that, well, there most likely is something fishy going on and you can perhaps exploit it. But that has been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. Leave a comment if you also want this series to continue. Uh, as long as we keep getting enough views, then we can, of course, continue the series and solve all the other challenges in the Either Not series. But without further ado, that has been it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope to see you back for the next one. So take care. Bye -bye.